In this video, we are going to explore using SvelteKit, and we're going to be using GraphQL with SvelteKit to power our front end. Here's a storefront that I built earlier. It contains some products that comes from a JSON file, and when we click the Add to Cart right now, all this does is log this to the console. If we go to the cart, you'll see we have no items in our cart, but what we want to do is use SvelteKit with a new plugin called KitQL to power these Add to Cart buttons and also update a cache on the front end so we can see a little indicator where we have cart here. And then when we update the cart, we want to show some optimistic UI before any of the API responses return. The project that we'll be using will be KitQL. It is a new set of tools that helps bridge the gap between GraphQL and Svelte. It's in a very early stage, so things may have changed from when you watched this video and when it was last updated. Finally, we'll be using a shopping cart API that we can use to send GraphQL mutations to, as well as query for our existing cart. Here we can see we have a query to fetch a cart by ID, and we can also add items to the cart, update them, and remove them. We'll be using the fetch new or existing cart query, the add item mutation, and the remove item mutation in this video. We'll take the response that comes from each of our mutations or queries to update the cache within our SvelteKit store. Now let's take a look at the code that is powering our application. We're importing the products JSON from products.json. This includes the product name, price, description, and the image. We're then returning that to the page as props, and we're also passing this kitql card ID. We fetch from the session kitql card ID. And if we go over to the hook that we have inside of our project, all that's happening in this file when a user visits our storefront is we set a cart ID so it's unique for every shopper. Further on down, we have a function here to add to cart and right now this just logs out to the console anything that we provide to the function. And instead of a for each block, for all of our products, we return the image, name, then we call add to cart passing the cart ID, the ID of the product, the name, price, and all of the images for our product. It's a similar setup for the cart page. We are passing that cart ID to our page. Then further on down, we have a remove from cart function that is logging the output. And then we have a reactive variable here, cart, which at the moment is just stubbed with total item zero and the items array as empty. Then further on down, for each item in our cart, we show the cart item image, the item name, and also then we have the button to remove from cart. Then instead of our root layout, we have two links to our homepage and cart. For the cart link, we also want to include the current subtotal of our cart. And we can do that using the load function here inside of our context module. To begin, we'll install the plugin at kitql slash all in and GraphQL itself. Once that's installed, we'll also install as a dev dependency .env. Now inside of .env, I'm going to set the current environment variable prefixed with vite underscore. Then I'm going to provide the URL to the GraphQL API that we're using. Now let's go ahead and create cogen.yml. Inside of cogen.yml, I'm going to pass schema as the environment variable that we set in .env. Then for the documents that it should be watching and generating for, we'll set here that we want to fetch all files in all folders that end with the file extension .graphql or .gql. Then for each of those documents, we want to generate two separate files. The first file will be the actual GraphQL types and we'll pass along TypeScript, TypeScript operations, type document node, TypeScript document nodes. And for the second file for the GraphQL store itself, well, we want to use the kitql codegen tool to do this. Then we'll specify for the overall config that we'll use type imports. And I'll show you what this does later. Then inside package.json, we want to create a new script called generate and this will be used to generate all of our types and run the configuration that we just defined inside of codegen.yml. He will call GraphQL codegen. We'll also pass require dot env slash config. This tells GraphQL code generator to use the dot env file when we are referencing env variables. We'll then update the prepare script to also run that generate command. If we now take a look at the codegen file that we created earlier, we specified that inside of the source directory lib that we'd have this folder called GraphQL. Then it would generate inside of the kitql file these two different files. Now inside of the lib folder, let's go ahead and create a new file in the folder GraphQL. We'll create the file kitql client.ts. First, let's go ahead and import kitql client. Then let's declare a new URL for our endpoint. And here we'll use import.meta and then we'll give it the name of env 
then we'll pass it the vid underscore GraphQL underscore endpoint that we define in our .env file. Lastly, let's go ahead and export a new KitQL client. We'll invoke the KitQL client that we imported previously, and here we'll pass it the URL. We'll also pass it credentials and we'll pass omit. And for the headers content type, we'll pass application JSON. That is what our server works with. We can also pass to KitQL the different types of logging. This improves the developer experience. So here we'll pass client, server, and operation and variables. There are different options that you can pass to KitQL client to help with your development experience and to simulate certain scenarios. Now then inside of the GraphQL file, let's create our first GraphQL fragment. We'll call this cartinfo.graphql. I will paste inside of here the fragment for our cart info. We can see here that we are creating a new fragment on the cart type, and this cart type comes from our GraphQL API. We are fetching the total items, total unique items, subtotal formatted amount, and then the items themselves. We are fetching the ID, name, images, line, and unit totals. You can learn more about GraphQL fragments in another video. If we now open the terminal and we run npm run generate, we can now see that we have successfully generated some output using kitql. If we head on over to the GraphQL folder, we can now see that we have a folder called underscore kitql. You can see here that this file has automatically been generated for us. There's not much in here just yet, but if we open the types file, we can now see that we have types for our GraphQL API. And all of these types match that of what's in the GraphQL API that we specified inside of the .env file. If we scroll to the very bottom, we can see that we have our new cart info GraphQL fragment that we just generated inside of our project. Now let's go ahead and create a new GraphQL query. We'll call this get cart by ID .graphql. Then inside of here, we'll add a named operation for our query and we'll call this get cart by ID. We'll assign a new variable called ID and this will be of the ID type. And then we'll spread in our cart info fragment. We'll also need to pass to cart the ID variable that we defined above. Now, if we rerun the generate command, here we have a new operation generated for us inside of our GraphQL stores.ts file. If you've worked with Svelte stores in the past, this is going to look very familiar. KitQL handles generating all of our functions that we need to make a request to our external API and then update the local cache all automatically. It does this using Svelte stores. You don't need to know everything that's going on inside of this file to use KitQL. It's just important to know that KitQL will manage our cache for us and make all of the requests and update anything inside of the stores that we're using. If we scroll to the bottom where we're exporting all of these different functions on our store, we can see that we can subscribe to our store, we can then query, we can then use query load, and we can reset the cache and patch the data. Now inside of our layout, let's import from the lib GraphQL folder underscore kitql GraphQL stores. And from here, we'll import get cart by ID. Let's now declare a reactive cart variable here. And this will assign to actually read in the value of get cart by ID. And then we'll fetch the actual data. And if there is data, we'll fetch the cart object response. We'll then need to actually execute the query itself. So above we'll call await get cart by ID, and then we'll use the special query load function. And here we'll pass some parameters. The first thing that we'll do is pass on fetch, and this comes from Svelte, and we'll pass our fetch method across. Then for the variables, we need to send in the ID, and the ID we can get from the actual session because we assigned a cookie, and we called it kitql cart ID. Now where we have a link to our cart, let's update this to actually display the subtotal formatted amount. Now if we run the dev server and then head on over to our local development server, we can see here that we have our page as we did before. And we can now say we have a formatted subtotal in our header. If we open our network inspector and we refresh the page, we can see here that we don't have any requests to the CardQL API or anything on the front end. And this is because it is fetched on the server. We can see here in the console that we have some helpful logging from KitQL. We can see here that it ran the operation get caught by ID with the following variables and that was done on the server. Because this is done inside the layout, if we navigate to the cart and then we go back to home, you'll notice here that nothing additionally was logged and no further network requests were made other than to fetch the cart page. Now let's go ahead and update our index page to actually run a mutation to add items to the cart. We'll then see that the subtotal in the header is also updated to reflect this. 
Now let's create a new GraphQL file and we'll call this add to cart.graphql. Inside of here, we'll call the following mutation. We'll give it a name of add to cart and then we'll pass it a variable called input, which is of the add to cart input type that comes from our GraphQL API. You can see what that looks like by opening the GraphQL types file. And if we search for add to cart, we can see here all of the different types that we have available to use inside of that variable. We'll then call the add item mutation, we'll pass along the input variable contents, and then we'll spread into the response that we want to get all of the fields inside of our fragment, cart info. Now with that file saved, let's run npm run generate. We can now see inside of GraphQL stores, we have a new function, add cart to store. Similar to the get cart by ID function, we were calling out to the kitql client to make a request, we're then updating our local cache, and then we return an object with some functions. And in the case of a mutation, we just return subscribe and mutate. So now inside of our index page, let's go ahead and use that new generated add to cart function. We'll go ahead and import a few new things from that generated store. The first thing that we'll fetch will be add to cart. And then we also want to fetch get cart by ID. Now let's go ahead and update the add to cart function to handle that network request using the kitql generated store. We first want to make a optimistic UI update. So the user sees immediately that this has been added to the cart. We'll create a new variable called optimistic data. And here we'll call out to the store, get cart by ID, and we'll fetch the data of that. We'll then update the string for the subtotal formatted amount to display the message refreshing. Then for our store, get cart by ID, we'll call the patch method. This will first take in the data, in this case it will be optimistic data, and then for the variables we need to pass it the ID of our cart. And here we can pass it kitql cart ID. Then we'll pass a third argument, which will be of the string value store only, and this will only update the store, not the cache. We'll then call the mutation to add the item to the cart, and we can do this by using the store that we just imported for add to cart. Then if we remember, we had two functions, mutate and subscribe, if we call mutate and we pass it some variables, we'll then forward along the input that we have passed to the add to cart function to this mutation. From the mutation, we want to fetch the data that comes back. Then we'll call kitql get cart by ID and here we'll pass to the patch function the new data that we have from our response above. No longer are we passing the optimistic data, but we want to pass the new data from our mutation. And we can do that here by passing cart data dot add item. We'll then need to pass the ID for our cart. And then for the third argument, we'll call cache and store. And there shouldn't be anything else we need to change inside of our page here. We're calling add to cart, pass along the cart ID, the item ID, name, price, and images for the button that yields add to cart. Now, if we run our development server and head on over to localhost, and we can see when we add to cart that a very brief optimistic UI occurs. We have the words refreshing quickly shown to us and then the new data that's returned from the API updates the cache. If I open the console and we click add to cart, you can see here that we have a patch. Then from the network, we have a patch to then update using the operation get cart by ID. Now all it's left to do is update our cart page to include buttons to remove items from the cart using the generated store from kitql. Instead of the folder GraphQL, let's create a new GraphQL file for our remove item mutation. I'm going to call this remove from cart.graphql. And then inside of here, we'll name our mutation remove from cart. We'll then give the variable name input, the type remove from cart input. And this again can be found inside of the GraphQL types file. And we can see here that the remove cart item input has two variables, cart ID and the ID of the cart item you want to remove. These comments are automatically generated by the GraphQL server that we're using. We're then calling the remove item mutation, passing along the variable input, and then spreading into the response the fragment for cart info. Let's now save this and run npm run generate. Now with that generated, we'll see inside of GraphQL stores that we have a new function for our remove from cart store. Similar to our index file, let's now go ahead and import get cart by ID and remove from cart. Then in our page load function, we just structure in session and pass it along the kitql cart ID to our page. Now where we have removed from cart, we can do exactly what we did in our add to cart mutation. We can perform an optimistic UI, then the API request, and then update the actual store and cache using the response from our mutation. Then all that's left to do is update our reactive variable cart to actually fetch from the store get cart by ID. 
Now where we are displaying zero items, we can update to actually include the total items from our cart store. If the store doesn't exist, we want to fall back to zero items. And then we can show the formatted amount with a fallback to an empty string. There isn't anything else that we need to update inside of our item list, but just know that we are displaying the image for the item, the name of the item, and then we have a button to remove. And to the remove function, we are passing the cart ID and the item ID itself. So now let's run npm run dev, and over on our local development server, we should now see inside of our cart that we have the 10 items in our cart, and then we have the subtotal. If we scroll down, we can see we have these individual cart items. And once we click remove, we can see we have an optimistic UI update, and then we have the API response updating in our cache. If we return to our storefront, and now we add to cart, we can see here when we add to cart, all of these items are updating the cache, and then the store. So let's recap what we've done. We have a layout file that includes a navigation item here, where the cart subtotal amount is shown to us. When we add to the cart, this performs a optimistic UI update to update the Svelte store. Then when our GraphQL request is satisfied, the response of that then updates the cache and the store. Then if we go to the cart and we remove an item, that again updates that global root layout file with our new updated cart amount, and it updates the page contents because we're using reactive variables.